Today on the audio hotline, we're going to figure out if we can make a terrible sounding untreated room actually sound pretty solid with one hundred dollar item. One one hundred dollar item. That. Yeah. The item that I'm referring to is the Array ISO Armor 2. This is considered an isolation chamber. So essentially you just put this over top of your microphone and it's supposed to completely isolate the microphone from the room sound. So you can cut out all that unwanted noise and disgusting reverb. This tool isn't for everyone, but if you suffer from room sound and you don't want it in your recordings, then this could be the tool for you. I hope I'm the tool for you. <laughs> But let's go ahead and jump into this review and see if this works as well as it's supposed to. Welcome all audio nerds to the audio hotline. And if you aren't an audio nerd, uh, maybe this could be your first step into audio nerdyism. One real quick thing that I forgot to mention because... I haven't really had people helping me out on this channel before this point, so I just want to say a big thank you to B&H for sending me the Array ISO Armor 2. They've been super generous in sending me products that I want to try out, and they are not making me say that I like it or anything. My opinion is, in fact, my own. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. And as I'm sure you've noticed if you've watched this channel before, we are not in the regular studio. Forgive me a little bit for the, the background. It's not great today. It's not great. It's just, it's the best I could do. This is the worst sounding, most untreated room in my house. Right now, I am actually using a dynamic microphone, and dynamic microphones are better at rejecting room noise. So this is the Rode Procaster, and I actually do have the SE Dynamite plugged into it, and today I will be using my Zoom H6 to record all of these microphones. This microphone should be cutting out a lot of reverb compared to a condenser microphone, so let's go ahead and plug in the condenser microphone, see how it sounds. And now here is the sound of a condenser microphone in an untreated room. Maybe you don't recognize this beauty, but this is the Rode NT1A. Yeah, you could say I'm a little bit of a Rode fanboy considering all of the microphones I'm gonna use in this are Rode products, but whatever. But I'm sure you could tell the difference in how much noise this grabs already. That's where this guy comes in. Right now I'm not using a pop filter because this actually does have a pop filter on the front of it. And when you actually purchase the Array ISO Armor 2, essentially all you really get is this and just a couple extra bands that go on the bottom in case one of them breaks. You do get a couple documents, but that's really it. And a big reason that I actually did want to test this product out is because a lot of people that come to this channel love the sound of condenser microphones. I recommend dynamic microphones because personally, I actually prefer dynamic microphones. But a lot of people just love the wide frequency response that the condenser microphone can supply. And I totally get it though. The frequency response is definitely unmatched by a dynamic microphone. So I understand why people think that the crispness and just the clarity of a condenser microphone is really nice. I do pull out and use a lot of dynamic microphones, <laughs> but I do love condenser microphones, especially for clean singing vocals. But essentially, this is the product that could be the answer to all those comments that I get as to why people's condenser microphones sound so awful. Well, let's go ahead and put this gigantic thing over this microphone, and I guess that's one thing, is if you're going to be on camera, this might not be the product for you. <laughs> But uh, well, we'll see. Before we get to the audio testing of this, there is one thing I do want to go over real quick, and that's just how to mount this over your microphone. When I first got this, I really struggled setting it up. I was trying to go from the bottom, put the microphone in through the bottom. Found that that didn't work at all. I tried front loading it, and that actually did work pretty well. I would recommend that route. But there is one additional thing that you can do that I learned from watching an RA video. So this is what you're actually supposed to do, is you actually just put your thumb right here, and you just gradually start to wiggle this little plastic section out. It will eventually give, and you can just pull that out right there. Sometimes the foam can kind of come out of the sides, but it's really easy just to put back in. It's no big deal. So at that point, you would mount your microphone in these bands and then just put it back in the way that you took it out. And here is the sound of the Array ISO Armor 2 isolation chamber. I didn't initially realize how awkward it would be to record with this gigantic thing on the microphone, but... Uh, We'll make it work, I guess. We'll go through a couple quick tests with the isolation chamber. First, let's go ahead and do a post-processing test. I'll do one with the chamber on and with it off. 
Here's the sound of the Rode NT1 with the Array isolation chamber over it. This is with some EQ, compression, de and possibly a noise remover. Here is how this microphone would sound with post-processing on it in an untreated room. However, I did put the WS2 Rode windscreen on this, you know, just for a little bit of protection. But here is how it would sound with the exact same post-processing that I'm using with the isolation chamber. Now, if you're a YouTuber that doesn't like the microphone on the camera screen and you have a little bit too much room in your recordings, here's what the microphone sounds like inside of the isolation chamber about two feet away from me. Now, here is how the Rode NT1A sounds about two feet away from me in a completely untreated room. Right now, I'm gonna play some white noise around the isolation chamber to see how much it actually rejects the sound. And here is how much of the room it actually cuts out with this over the microphone. Let's jump back to a different take with the array off. Here is the sound of the Rode NT1A without the isolation chamber on it. And once again, here is with the array ISO Armor 2 on the microphone. And once again, here is the Rode NT1A with no isolation chamber over it. Once again, this is the dynamic microphone, and here is how it sounds in this untreated room. Now, I would like to test this out with a dynamic microphone in it, but it just doesn't have the room to really make that happen. So this is pretty much strictly for condenser microphones. But the good news is your dynamic microphone already kicks ass at rejecting noise, so... Good on you. Now that I've done these tests, I'm gonna go back and listen through them to see how much I think it makes a difference. And then I'll uh, come back and give you my thorough review of the RA ISO Armor 2. All right, now let's go ahead and get into my review of the RA ISO Armor 2. If you couldn't tell, I kept the Rode tradition of this video going. This is the Rode M2. Once again, going into the Zoom H6. This time we are in the audio hotline studio. You know, when I was going back and watching this video and going through the footage and seeing how it sounds, I did kind of struggle to find a massive difference. And that's one thing I will say that I've always preached essentially is that what you're listening on is a very big part of how you're going to hear things. Just because a microphone sounds good on one listening device, it could sound awful on another. So when a lot of people listen to comparison videos of mine and they're like, they sound identical, I'm like, dude, please stop listening on your iPad speakers for a second, please. Thank you. But that's definitely one thing that I did notice with certain headphones. There was way less of a difference with this on compared to when I was listening with my actual speakers or nicer headphones. Now, one thing I will say is that actually the biggest difference I noticed wasn't necessarily that it was cutting out reverb and room noise, although it was doing that. It definitely did what it said it was going to do. There was still reverb that was getting in. Like, I don't think that it was completely dead sounding or anything, which I don't know if a ton of people necessarily want it completely dead. I know voiceover artists strive for that. And I will say that if you were to use this and then maybe put up a couple moving blankets, you could set up a voiceover room for 150 bucks pretty easily. But the thing that I was saying is the biggest difference that I noticed was actually the tonality and the sound of the microphone changing. I noticed that when it was in the isolation chamber, it was almost equivalent to grabbing a dynamic microphone and cupping it. You know how a lot of metal screamers do that and mixing people just absolutely hate it. They'll just grab it and be like, <sighs> yeah, that's essentially like to get a lower sound. And it was kind of doing that same thing. But not only was it, you know, bumping up the lows. But when the lows are accented, it kind of felt like the highs were being brought down. Let me go ahead and just play a quick clip of that one more time just so you can kind of hear what I'm talking about. And once again, here is with the RA ISO Armor 2 on the microphone. And once again, here is the Rode NT1A with no isolation chamber over it. You know, I don't think it's a bad thing in every case, especially with the Rode NT1A, which is very hyped in the high end. I actually think I really liked the sound of it. So if you have a condenser microphone that you feel like, you know, it's, it's bumped in the highs quite a bit and you do want something that kills room noise a little bit, I think that this is a pretty solid option. 
but I don't think this is for absolutely everyone that wants room noise gone. I do think in a lot of cases a moving blanket could do just as good, but here is kind of where this comes into play a little bit more, is actually with traveling or going to a location where you have to record where you don't know your surroundings super well and you don't know if you can hang blankets or you don't want to bring all the equipment to hang blankets. So grabbing one of these and trying to kill a little bit of room reverb could be a very nice thing. I will admit when I first put this on the microphone, I expected that room noise just to be completely gone. I expected it to be pretty dead. I will say it probably did cut about 70% of the room noise out, which is actually pretty outstanding. And I'm kind of just being a little nitpicky. And I think I just expected a little too much. But overall, it just comes down to whether or not you think this will work for you. You've heard the sound samples and you can decide based off of your room, you know, what you need. There are a lot of people out there that act like getting treatment and treating your room is like the most expensive thing of all time. And yeah, if you want to go on a website and have them decide every single thing for your room, yeah, it's going to cost you an ass load. Like, just an absolute shit ton. It will. But there are other ways of getting a clean-sounding room or just trimming down on some of the room noise. Moving blankets are absolutely fantastic for this. They do a outstanding job. You can use, you know, just a cheap old microphone stand to just stand up a moving blanket right in front of you and you're recording and it's sounding pretty solid. And I will say that the RA ISO chamber is definitely in that category of less expensive things than treating your whole room that can get you a really good sound and just overall be pretty solid. Another nice thing about the RA ISO chamber is that I thought that the pop filter did work very well. When it comes to the build quality of the RA ISO Armor 2, this thing is just outstanding. It's just... It's tough. It's very tough. Like this thing will last you a very long time, even if you're going to travel with it, throw it in the back of your car and it'll last for sure. Overall, I really do like this setup. And I will say compared to like the eyeball, the whatever K word eyeball at like $200, this is an absolute steal compared to that. Because I know even that product doesn't kill all the room reverb, and I know that it also does tonally affect the microphone a little bit as well. So compared to other products out there, I think that the RA ISO Armor 2 does a very good job. But once again, it just depends on what you're recording and what you need. One thing I will say, and I did want to emphasize for this video, learning and educating yourself on polar patterns, frequency response, and all of those things that surround a microphone's tone is absolutely essential for getting a product that you will be happy with. So a lot of gamers and podcasters and people on YouTube that have a lot of reverb in their room don't have it treated or that, you know, are click clacking on keyboards, making super loud noises. I think that it's very essential for you to pick a microphone like a dynamic microphone that will suit your needs more than just being like, oh, my favorite YouTuber uses a Blue Yeti. That's a cadastro microphone. Let's get it. No, dude, just pick the mic that's going to work. But there are absolutely situations where people will need to use condenser microphones. And if you're not going to listen to my words and you're going to get a condenser anyway, even though you have an untreated room and you want a dead sound, maybe the RA ISO Armor 2 is right for you. Well, thank you for watching this review of the RA ISO Armor 2. I hope it helped you out, help you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. If there are any questions that I forgot to answer, go ahead and ask them down below. I am not pointing to my crotch when I do that. I'm talking about the comment section. A big thank you to B&H for sending me this product to try out. I really do appreciate everything they've done for me. And a very big thank you to all of my subscribers. And thank you for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.